Shop equipment costs a lot of money and we don't want to waste any of that money on products going bad or ruining because we didn't take care of it. In this video, I'm gonna tell you five products to help you maintain your shop, keep everything running in tip top shape. If you're interested in any of the products you see today, there'll be a link in the description below as you go check them out for yourself. This video is brought to you by 731woodworks.com. Go check out our online store. We have easy to follow build plans to help you make awesome projects. If you use the code CLEAN, you'll get 20% off any order. Go check it out. I'm in South Arkansas and we have very high humidity here, especially in the summertime. You're talking 80, 90, close to 100% humidity some days. And humidity is moisture and moisture doesn't like, or metal doesn't like moisture because it'll rust. And I've got some ways to prevent that. One very cool product I come across thanks to Mike Taylor at taytools.com for telling me about this. You can pick these up on Amazon. It's called Z-Rust. These are little capsules that actually absorb the moisture in drawers and things like that. So in my shop, I have a ton of drawers and I have a lot of metal items in there. As you can see, these channel locks are really rusty. Drill bits will rust, pliers will rust, wrenches will rust. That's why these are really great to throw in these drawers. These were sitting out in the elements out here in the garage for years until I got a climate controlled area. But if you don't have a climate controlled area, these things are almost a must have in your garage. What's really cool about these, there's actually a little 3M strip or some type of sticky strip. You can stick them to anything if you wanted to stick them under things also. They come in packs of four, so if you need more than that, you can pick those up. They're very inexpensive. Also, saw blades will rust. These, I've got a drawer full of these saw blades, and after, you, especially after you clean them and you scrub them with a wire brush, you've scraped the metal, so it's always a good idea to put this in there. And of course, hammers are really the world's worst, especially these old style hammers here. Very inexpensive, but they'll rust. If you just want to prevent rusting, you'll throw one of these capsules in here. They have some type of vapor they put off to help prevent that from rusting, and they're just a good way to go. Sticking with the rust theme, if your tools are outside or in a garage or anywhere that there's high humidity, you know that your cast iron tools are rusting. Your table saw top will rust, your jointer bed will rust, and any other metal tool that you have. One of the easiest and non-toxic ways i found to get rust off of products is actually these little Sandflex hand blocks. These things are absolutely awesome. They're basically blocks of sandpaper. I don't know how they make them, whether they're glued together or what, but it's like a giant eraser of sandpaper. It's not like paper glued to a block. It's the whole thing is sand. So you'll actually take the coarse, start out with the coarse, and rub it onto the rust, and then you would go to the medium and then the fine to polish it. That takes that rust off. You have to use a little bit of elbow grease, but it's much better than that stinky bow shield stuff I was using. It's got some type of acid in it or something, and it just, it's not good. I don't like it. This is much easier as far as easier on your lungs and, and safer for you, and it takes the rust right off. You just have to use a little elbow grease, like I said. So start with the coarse, then go to the medium, then go to the fine. And once you get it polished up, what do you do? Because you've scraped down to bare metal, you've taken any protectant off that you've had on there, I got a product for you. This is my jointer. You can see it's got a little bit of buildup on it. I don't know that it's rust per se, maybe it is. Make sure that before you operate on anything like this, it's unplugged. Show you really quick how these things work. Coarse, medium, fine. I like that they come in these boxes. Just hang on to these little cardboard sleeves so that you don't get them mixed up. Like I said, it's gonna take some elbow grease, so don't be afraid of it. It ain't gonna hurt you. When you have buildup like that on your tools, when you're trying to slide the dock across it, it starts kind of catching on it. You'll feel it kind of stick. We don't want that. That's gonna cause snipe and all kinds of other issues. And it can be a safety issue. Got our course done. We're gonna go back with medium. And then the fine one last. This is made for the polishing basically. Just putting light pressure, just move it with the direction of the, the metal grain, basically. If you go across it, you'll see that it'll actually leave a little streak. Not that it matters too much. Look at the difference in the sides. The one that I have clean on the left versus the ones that's not clean on the right. It's gonna make a big difference when you start sliding stock on there. That stuff is starting to rust. It's a little sticky. 
and you get over there and it's pretty slick, but we can slick it up even more. Now one good way to make sure that this stays protected from rust and make sure everything glides smooth on there is use something like this dry lube with Teflon. This is actually made for tools. It's even got a saw blade on it. It says you can put it on your saw blades. Eh, I don't think I would do that. Just because I don't want any extra material on my saw blade to heat up and cause dirt or grime to build up on a saw blade. I just, I don't think that's a good idea, but I'm not the expert. The good thing about this stuff is it, it'll dry, dry. It won't leave a wet film on there at all. It's also a really good idea to put this on your table saw. In the past, I've actually recommended uh, paste wax, or you can even use our Outlaws board butter to put on your tools, but this stuff here gives a better protective. If it has grime or dirt built up on there, use something like this Simple Green, spray it on, wipe it off. I actually put a little bit on the fence as well, just to help everything continue to glide real nice and smooth. It's not gonna hurt anything for sure. The beautiful thing about that stuff is it makes your saw or your jointer as slick as owl snot. It'll just slide on the thing. It's like super slick. I like it because it doesn't leave a sticky film. It doesn't leave any film. It's not wet. So sawdust and stuff like that's not gonna stick to it. It's not gonna catch your material. Everything is just really slick. If your stock can glide on your tools much, much smoother, it's just gonna give you a, a better cut, a better experience with your tools and it's so inexpensive, why would you not do it? This stuff works great on your table saw, your jointer, your planer, your drill press, or anything else that has a metal top that you need to slide your stock across. It just works good. Another product you may or may not be aware of is belt dressing. So if you have a belt-driven drill press or a belt-driven table saw, you may wanna look into this stuff called Belt dressing. <laughs> so belt dressing is going to keep your belts conditioned and it's gonna actually aid in power transfer. It's gonna help them grip a little bit better on these pulleys. If you have a drill press or even a table saw that's belt driven, you wanna pick some of this up. It's inexpensive and it works well. I can actually make that stop, but it's the power of the motor, not enough to pull everything. It actually worked. It, I really showered down on it a while ago when I showered down on it. Showered down means pull hard. When I showered down on it, it actually stopped. Now it doesn't. And I've had this problem with this drill press ever since I got it. It was, I always felt it was a little underpowered. Yeah, that's all right. Last but certainly not least, uh, not last, stick around, I got a bonus. If your saw blade isn't cutting like it used to, it probably just needs cleaning. It may not be, need to be resharpened and it may not need to be replaced. I asked several people what they were using to clean their saw blades. All Red Woodworker can come through with this one and actually several people, James King included if I'm not mistaken, uses Simple Green Purple. This stuff works good and it's very inexpensive. You can actually get this spray bottle and a giant jug of this that will make 40 gallons or 14, I'm sorry. It'll make 14 gallons of this stuff. It'll take you a very long time to use all this up. You saw me use it to clean the table saw before I put the Teflon down. You also see me right here cleaning saw blades with it. It's the first time I've actually used it to clean a saw blade. Man, it made that CMT blade sparkle like new money. It was really, really easy to do. I actually picked up a package of these stainless steel brushes on Amazon not too long ago, and I use these to clean saw blades and other things, and they're just really handy for that. I also clean my barbell with them, but this is a really good tool to have. It actually helps get the pitch and rust or anything else off of your saw blade. So I would strongly suggest picking up some of these to go along with your new saw blade cleaner. I've used other saw blade cleaners before. This is by far the best I've used to date. Keep with the shop maintenance theme. Don't be like me and don't forget to check your shop vacs and make sure they're not full or dust collectors, filters, anything like that in your shop that needs to be cleaned regularly. 
This dust extractor, I let it get over full. I've also done it before on my shop back and let it get way too full. Now that I have a mini split, I check that regularly as well as the air cleaner up there. I gotta keep those filters clean. So just a friendly reminder to keep your filters clean. One more bonus tip for you. If you don't wanna buy Simple Clean, you don't wanna buy Blade Cleaner and you just don't want to, the next time you're at the grocery store, just pick up some oven cleaner, it'll clean your blades too. As far as the belt dressing goes, I was actually quite shocked that I was able to really pull down on that handle and it doesn't stop now. I, I assumed that it was the power of the motor on the drill press that was causing my issues, but it was just the belt slipping and this fixed it. So that's actually quite surprising and impressive. It does say not to use it on serpentine belts, whatever that means. If you like this video, click that box right there. It's gonna take you to the next set of videos. Clicking that box gets you the big old virtual fist bump. Also another one of my favorite videos right there.